Okay, I, I swear, I, I didn't, I didn't forget to start the stream because I, uh, I was messing around with the brush settings in Krita. Because I was like, why is it so large? And then it was like, um, oh no, why is it, n uh, on like decimals for pixels? And it's like, oh, okay. Um, also, wait just a second. I need to... I need to check one thing. Okay. That's fine. Okay, good. Uh, live. Yes. Bitrate. Uh, quality says it is fine. Yes. Okay, good. Um, okay. Hello, 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 Mabase. Um, so I'm gonna be honest, I, I really don't know what I'm gonna be drawing tonight. Also, okay, this layout looks a uh, decent amount better. Uh, I don't know what to fill in the empty space above my head, though. Um, but hello. I played way too much Monster Hunter. So I'd like to do something that's not that tonight. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm going to start off by... Uh, I had a, a funny little idea. Ah, socials above the head. That's a good idea. That's true. That's very, very true. I could do that. Okay, wait. <laughs> I I need to I need to write that down. Um I need to make a note. Wait. Um Layout pit socials above head. Um, uh, expand chats along bottom. Perfect. Okay. Um. Okay. So I I had a little idea because um, my idea for the live two D thingy was going to be something very simple that's basically just eyes and a mouth and i was thinking about uh drawing and uh trying to rig well trying to do all of those things for a very basic dragon quest slime oh wait i i just remembered i need to i need to do one little thing well not need to i i don't need to do this at all Oh, hi, oh, hello, Rocco. Oh, that's, uh, Ryusei's emote. Oh, no. Don't, don't collapse that. Too many buttons. Ah. Okay. Also, I'm, I'm, uh, sorry if I, like, sneeze or anything, because it's spring, and I have very bad allergies, so... If I get, forget to mute in time for a sneeze, uh, don't make fun of how my sneeze sounds, please. Uh, cause... Uh, I had someone else, uh, laugh at my sneeze this weekend, and I was like, what? I always sneeze like that. What do you mean? Um, okay, wait, I'm getting off topic already. But th there is no topic. This is that's it on haha. -ha get... Oh, the... no topic to be off topic, ha. Huh? Nice. Um... I already forgot what I was looking up. No, I didn't forget it. I just don't know what to call it. What was it called? Um. Also, I hope clicky clacky isn't too, too loud. Uh, or if it is loud, it's not um, obnoxious.
Um. Yes, a, a drawing stream today. Oh, it's not? Okay, good. Uh, also, hello, Cliff. Um, let me try to... Oh, this is all. All a tiny, tiny bit strange. Um, this should be transparency. Uh, apologies. I, I completely forgot to do this. I, I had the idea for it, but I forgot to actually implement it. So, if you would allow me to do this for just a second. Um. Um, that does not look transparent to me. Um, I, uh, I, I think I just may have to change, maybe add a filter to that. Um, yes. No. Uh, uh, okay, um, that... <laughs> That's that's very bad. Let me just you know what's a lot simpler? Uh just just do it this way. I don't know why I made it so hard on myself. Um oh oh god, everything's oh oh no. Too many windows. Um okay. Uh composure. Oh no, I spelled that wrong. That's fine. Who cares about spelling things correctly? <laughs> Languages? Uh, who? Ah, who cares about that? Um. Okay. Okay. Aha! That actually works pretty well. Aha. Okay. <laughs> All that time just to fit that above my head. Okay. That's fine. Um, but yes, I am very, very, um, un unpracticed with arts. So I, uh, please, please be gentle on me. That's all I ask. Also because I am... <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I'm ready... Oh, the slide in transition? Yeah, I need, to get, I need to get better transitions too. I need to get better transitions. Oh, where's that art? Uh, okay, wait. Um, bully ours? No, no bully. Oh, no. Please, no bu bully. But, um, I think I was saying that my original idea for... No, no bully, no bully, please. Oh yeah, KK, I, I still need to check out her stuff. There, there's too many things. I... Okay, so... <laughs> bully the bull. No, don't you ar ari pie smug me. No, but, uh, what, like, I, I played way too much monster hunter so i i i'm so behind on like all archives like i'm behind on everything by like a week and a half because like i i know i said i got it on my system but i was farming like bow sets yesterday even though i was like eh yeah i'm i'm okay with the gear i have because yesterday i was like hmm maybe i should uh Maybe I should farm a fire bow set for Camellios, since uh, Camellio Camellios is very weak on all of his hit zones to fire. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'll make a fire bow set. 
because in GU I farmed Camellios by using, um, I think Rapid Fire Pierce, Rapid Fire, Fire Pierce Light Bowgun, <laughs> to take down Camellios in like all ranks, to farm him. Uh, so I wanted to do something similar in Rise to make a similar set, and I just ended up farming like every kind of elemental bow yesterday, and I was like, ah. Oh. Also, hello, Tamaro. Uh, I felt he. Oh my god, <laughs> I keep... Uh, it's fine. Sidetrack is fine. It's Satsudan too. Uh, okay, so my idea for the first drawing is because I was... Uh, I was planning on drawing and trying to draw and rig a basic, like, Dragon Quest slime. I was thinking about, like, the... Uh, Ungo Bungo Raw. Uh, actually, that that's one thing that surprises me, is that I think bow and maybe insect glaive are the only weapons in Rise that don't go unga bunga all in on raw, because I mean, pierce bow is still very good for raw because Nargakuga weapons are insane, but uh, I um. It'll probably change when they introduce more Elder Dragons later, but, um, because, because even Sword and Shield is a raw weapon now, because you would think they would change it because it was pretty much a raw weapon only in Iceborne because of the addition of Perfect Rush and the overbuffing of Perfect Rush and I think the Alatrion patch, and it, it turned Sword and Shield from well, even before that, in base game world, it was a raw weapon because the best DPS you could hit was the charge backstep into the sh uh, falling shield bash. So it feels weird because all these games before world, Sh and Shield was like a very all-rounder uh, like status and elemental weapon. Like if you wanted good damage, you had to build a set specifically for like a certain element for that monster but now you just go full on unga bunga raw you it's not even sword and shield anymore it just shield and sword because all you do is bash your shield into the monster's face and knock it out it, it it's really weird how much they changed it um <laughs> wait i can't <laughs> Okay, wait, I, I was saying, okay, so what I want to draw today is a, basically there's a type of slime in Dragon Quest called a slime stack, which, let me make a new layer, wait, where's my layers, um, wait, I don't know where, uh, is that for new layers? Oh, uh, even with Perfect Rush, it's still okay for Elemental. It's just that right now the best... Well, it's not the best. It's just insanely good quality of life-wise. Because the new Shield Bash combo has three hits. And the third hit actually does pretty good damage and KO. Um, and Shield Attacks don't take any sharpness up. So it's really easy if you just spam shield attacks and the new uh, spinning reaper combo finisher to keep your sharpness like all the way in the right and in, in the white as uh, oh I, I need to stop looking at chat like as as I'm saying because I'll get cut off uh, uh, so even with sword and shield if you do the shield bash combo you'll be you'll be doing a lot of KO damage. And you'll be keeping your sharpness up, because using the shield for attacking does not use up any sharpness. Which makes sense when you think about it, it's just weird. Um, so, you do good damage, one. Two, you do a lot of KO damage, or exhaust damage if you're not hitting the head. And three, you're not using up sharpness. But the weakness about it is that shield attacks do not apply elemental, because that's only on the sword. So right now, uh, 
because because they nerfed elemental crit in Rise. Unless uh unless the skill description is wrong, but right now uh elemental crit makes it so that the crit numbers for elements uh with that skill are the same for all weapons when in previous games um they had they had bonus crit for the faster weapons that were kind of meant to build for elemental so things like sword shield and dual blades would get bonus elemental crit and bow would also get bonus elemental crit um but it looks like they've nerfed it so that all weapons have like the same amount of elemental crit so that's turning a lot of people off of elemental builds uh in rise which it might change later but i i think i honestly think in the next game they just need to totally redo elemental because it feels like they've been really messing it up like this generation for world and uh rise also wait let me <laughs> look into the chat now <laughs> uh posted webms of sns locking down monster with stun and jump attacks and people asked if it was a new raw weapon it pretty much is sword shield is insane for all even the new uh well it's not new exactly it was a hunter art in gu but they brought it back as a wirebug skill in ri uh, ri rise okay i almost said wise uh, in Rise. Uh, Shoryugeki. Metsu Shoryugeki. Because it's just... Just a Shoryuken uppercut. But the beginning of it has guard frames in front of it. And if you guard an attack with it, the it becomes pretty much twice as strong and does like twice the amount of knockout damage. So it's... It's just insanely satisfying to pull off, and it's very, very strong if you do land it. Because I think landing the counter version of that is a, does about as much knockout as uh, a full tr like double pound into golf swing combo with hammer. So, and because it's a shield attack, it doesn't apply any elemental again. So, sword shield is kind of. A raw weapon in this game they do give you switch skills that let you play it in a more Ugh. i'm talking so fast that my tongue can't keep up um uh they do give you switch skills that let you play it with a more elemental sw uh play style but those eat through your sharpness because they use the sword and not the shield um include unga bunga in your vocabulary more often uh, I'm I'm not a caveman pretending to be a bull. I'm just, I, I, unga bunga is just my default like description for just brainless like, ooh, grug smash play styles in games. You know, like strength builds in Dark Souls, uh, great sword and Monster Hunter, like any. Any game where you just lug around like the big melee weapon and go, ooh, tactic, hard, me, smash. And and that's all you need to win, you know? So I, I called that Oonga Boonga because... Oh, what else should I call it? Just Oonga Boonga, you know? Yes, it, it's still great and it, it really is big damage. A oh, great sword. I mean... <laughs> No like thinking, me sit there, charge attack. If me miss, me miss. If me hit, monster die. <laughs> uh, great sword is pretty fun. I I still like Valor Great Sword the most from GU. But uh, Great Sword feels pretty decent in Rise. I just uh. Uh, I just don't like, uh, I'm, I'm gonna say it, I know it's kind of dumb, because I understand what they're going for, but I don't like true charge slash. I, I don't like the addition of that into Greatsword's moveset. 
because it does so much more damage than the other two charge attacks. Well, they, they did make it a little bit better in Rise, but in World, they made it so... Well, and they did buff it in Iceborne, but blah, 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 whatever. But uh, at least in base game world, it kind of made it so that the first two hits weren't even worth doing. You just fish for a true charge slash. But I, I understand where they're going because they didn't want Greatsword to be just a binary. Like you always build for crit draw. You always just do a crit draw kind of set. They, they wanted to make Greatsword have different build paths, which I understand. I just don't like True Charge Slash as a move, but I do like Rage Slash, the switch skill in Rise, which kind of makes it like Brimstone Slash from GU. It, it's like the same animation, but the move isn't the same. It basically lets you super guard through attacks, and if something hits you while you're charging it up, it does even more damage. So it encourages you f to be more aggressive and to like, go ahead and charge through attacks as the monster is attacking, but you also take a lot more damage too. So it's more of a risk-reward playstyle. So even though it doesn't do as much damage as true charge slash, you're going to be finding a lot more opportunities to land it. Because not only can you power through attacks with it, you can also um, you can re redirect it in any direction around you. So you don't have to worry about missing as long as it's close enough to you. Uh, okay, wait. <laughs> I, I keep going on long-winded talks and missing chat. <laughs> uh, let me read this. Uh, oh, you miss Br Brave already? Uh, okay. I, I really miss Brave slash Valor, but I understand why they don't want it back, because it was, like, wildly overpowered for, like, a lot of the weapons it was on. Um, I don't think you should be able to skip to true charge, but I do prefer it over the simple hit and sheath. Yeah, I, I get, uh, I get that, which I, I kind of do too, because again, I do, I, I get that they added it because they didn't want Greatsword to just be delegated to purely you hit and run with crit draw and that's it. That's the entire weapon, you know? They, they want to make it fresher. Oh, TCS is so good for that Oonga Boonga feeling. Oh, oh my god. I still... <laughs> I, I still remember the setup for Wake Up True Charge Slashes from World. I, uh... I don't remember if they changed it uh, in Iceborne or Rise because if the roll distance is different or if it moves you any further... But I still remember, you have to like get right into the part you want to hit, guard onto it, and then roll backwards. And then you can perfectly land the true charge slash on that sleeping monster. And it's like, ooh, a big number, a neuron, activate. It's like, oh, millions of tiny numbers, oh, dual blades, oh, I sleep. You see like the number six pop up like ten times a second, oh, I sleep. I, I, I don't play Monster Hunter to, like, be a blender on the ankles of monsters. Oh, but Sleeping Monster do take 20 seconds to build up this giant hit that does, like, 1,200 damage. Ooh, <laughs> Neuron. Oh, Neurons activate. Ooh. Uh, they should make crit draw more viable for other weapons, which... Actually, they changed crit draw in Rise. So crit draw maxes out at 40% uh, crit on the draw attack and 2 seconds after the draw attack. I think 2 to 4 seconds after the draw attack. So they explicitly nerfed the crit draw playstyle for Greatsword, which makes me think more that they're trying to purposely push Greatsword away from that playstyle. Um, so... Other weapons can use it a lot better now, and it's just straight up like nerfed for Greatsword. 
more or less the same in Rise, but I haven't seen many monsters go to sleep in Rise so far. Oh, um, in Rise, I think it's because how open the areas are. Uh, monsters will just kind of like stand there, like looking around, and then, and because if you can see them, their AI can probably see you and they won't go to sleep. It, it's a little strange. But I've had, like, Nargakuga and, uh, and monsters that sleep in the eastern part of Shrine Ruins, like, go to the area and just fall asleep immediately. Like, if you're hunting Nargakuga in flood, uh, flooded, ah, uh, flooded forest, when he runs back to the area that he sleeps in, he goes to sleep, like, immediately. Like, he just falls down, like, his head, like, has inertia as it hits the ground. He doesn't set it down. Um, they would have to change multiple movesets for a single skill, though, which is quite unreasonable. Interesting sounds. Yeah, it's it's interesting that they change crit draw like that. Uh, which is kind of strange, because they introduced a new skill that's pretty much only made for s switch axe called uh, mo uh, morph boosts. Speed morph, something like that, where it speeds up the animations of morphing attacks on switch axe and charge blade, and powers them up uh, with higher levels. So I think it's interesting they took that one skill that was pretty much only used for greatsword uh, to make it wider for other weapons, but they made a new skill that's pretty much only for switch axe. Because for Charge Blade, it doesn't apply on that many attacks. Yeah, Speed Morph. Also, speaking of Morph, I, I really need to start drawing. Okay, so my idea was drawing a slime stack from Dragon Quest, which is exactly what it sounds like, just a stack of slimes. Of three slimes, exactly. Uh, I think this was introduced in Dragon Quest IX. Oh, what is this emo? Oh, oh yeah, lap and emotes. Um, uh, I think this was introduced in DQ Nine. And it's something like a mid, uh, a midpoint or a weaker version of a king slime, because it's similar in that. I, I'm just explaining all these game mechanics. Whatever. Um, <laughs> um, it's similar to King Slimes in that uh, you can have an, an encounter of just multiple tiny slimes. Uh, and these slimes will have higher health than regular slimes, so you know something's up. And then after some turns, they will actually do a move where they get together and combine. So, you meet these a lot earlier than King Slimes, but they use that same sort of mechanic, I guess. Um, so, their colors, I don't remember what order, but the colors are blue, green, and red, which let me try to find around the colors. So, one is blue. The other is green, like... Okay, so one is blue because that's the color of the normal slime. Which I, I keep forgetting to drink. I just need to put my water right here so I remember to drink. Um, the Another slime is green because that's another basic slime, the bubble slime. And then the third one is red, like a she slime. So they made the slime stack take the colors of the three, like, early game basic slimes. Um, and because, and because two out of three of the colors are the same, I was thinking about drawing a slime stack as the Tajador combo in uh, Kamen Rider O's. 
uh, drawn rig this uh, just for live 2D practice. Uh, maybe use it some days just uh, uh, as a th as a thing so that I don't have to be a PNG. But you know the legality of it is dubious. Um, so so maybe I wouldn't. I would have to make them slightly less teardrop shaped. Uh, and then say they are totally not slimes. But, um, uh, it, it was just an idea. And it was just gonna be like a regular slime, something very simple, that's just, you know, just a body, eyes, and mouth. Because that would be relatively very simple to, uh, draw the assets for Live 2D and to rig. You don't have to worry about hair, you don't have to worry about neck, you don't have to worry about moving parts on the body. It's just the body and a face. That's it. Illegal activity? No, don't, don't rat me out. <laughs> don't, don't rat me out, please. Please, the, the, the Square Enix lawyers. No, I, I don't think, um, I don't think Square Enix is that bad about things like that. Because, I mean, Dragon Quest is such a huge series in Japan. And there's a lot of fan work, so I don't think so, maybe? I, I'm really not sure. Take off the tip, put them in ice. No, I think they're- wait, let me- let me look it up. I think there is an ice cream cone slime stack. Wait a second. I- I need to look this up. Um... Okay, wait. Dragon Quest Slimes. Oh, uh, that just made me sad. The first result on Google was the, uh, uh, they only brought over, I think, the second game to the West. Uh, for the DS, it was called Rocket Slime, which I liked a lot and i'm very sad that they never brought over the 3ds sequel because it, it was in that strange time where square enix uh thought that people in the west didn't want dragon quest for some reason and it was the era between dragon quest monsters joker 2 and i think the dragon quest musou game which was a period of about eight years or so where they didn't release any games, they didn't localize any games in the West at all. So we missed the majority of, like, the Dragon Quest 3DS games. We only got the tail end of it with, um, the, the 7 and 8 remake, I think. We didn't get any other Dragon Quest 3DS game. Um, wait. <laughs> wait, I was looking up the, the ice cream. Um... Um, I, I'm sure they have to have done it, because they do a lot of, like, strange things for, like, the Monsters games and the mobile games. They even have a cube slime. Like, what is that? Come on. Um, oh yeah, egg slimes. <laughs> uh... Yeah, they have a lot of, like, uh, candy and dessert-themed slimes. So, yeah, they have a cream slime, they have a flan slime. So I'm sure they have to have an ice cream uh, slime stack slime. Uh, let me look it up, though. Unless it doesn't want me to see it. Slime stack. Oh, wait, wait a second. Oh, sorry about that. Someone knocked on my door. Knock, knock, knock. 
Um, apparently there is not, at least on the DragonQuest.org wiki, which that's very surprising that there's not. Oh, but... <laughs> no, no, is, is Square Enix himself? It was... <laughs> it was Akira Toriyama himself <laughs> coming to my door going, hey, you better not be ta stealing my monster designs. No. Uh, but since two out of three of them uh, roughly share the same colors, I was thinking about drawing them as the Tajador or Tajadol combo from Kamen Rider O's. Because uh, I'm going to have to give like a full explanation on what Kamen Rider O's is now, aren't I? Um... <laughs> Uh, wait, did I never, oh wait, I never drew a different, uh, different layer. Wait, where's my layers on Krita? I haven't opened this in so long. Where are my layers? Wait a second. I'm, I'm gonna look that up too. Oh no. Uh, la layers. Krita. Uh, I, I don't I don't see it anywhere on my uh on my thing which is bad I, I should have it around here or here I just don't know where it is um la 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 layers Oh, um, oh, it's here. I'm dumb. Okay. No, I see it perfectly. I'm, I, I somehow ignored that completely. Okay. No, never mind. I know. <laughs> I, I know where layers are. I know where layers are. Okay. So uh, let, let me give a quick rundown on what Kamen Rider O's is. Common rider. Oh my, this is so, oh, that, okay, wait, hold on, let me. O's. It's three O's, but they stylize it as just saying O's. Oh. O's. Uh, because I, I don't know exactly why. Kamen Rider has a lot of uh, dubious naming methods with um, Kamen Rider... Wait, let me write this down. With Kamen Rider Z-O. And then their latest anniversary season was Kamen Rider G-O. Um, so you can see how, uh, if you're new to the series... Uh, looking at all the different seasons can get a little bit confusing. Comrader cereal brand, yes, exactly. Comrader O's. Parva nutritious breakfast. Okay, but basically they named it that way because the gimmick of the season is well, the gimmick of every Comrader is the belt because. There, there's three parts to every Kamen Rider. The mask, the belt, and the bike. Which, the bike has fallen out of use uh, in the most recent years. Because, um... There's a strange law that got passed in Japan about driving modified bikes in public places. Um, so... If they use, like, very heavily modified bikes, you know, which they have to be, because they're trying to sell these things as toys, um, they can't ride them out for public shooting anymore. They have to only do it in like uh, studio lots or do it in CG. Yeah, it, it's very specific. It's very strange. Uh, I'm thinking... I, I honestly have no idea why they did it. I don't know enough about um, Japan's, like, the state of their biking like 
modification industry, so I, I really don't know. But um, that's why in more recent seasons, uh, you'll find that uh, they either introduce the bike for like one episode and use it maybe three times in the entire series, or if they do use it a lot, it's almost entirely in CG. Um, but uh, yeah, but that's the three parts to every camaraderie: the mask, the belt, and the bike. Uh, the belt for this season is like a little. Uh, a, a weird little, like, token vendor thing where uh, to transform, you pit three metals into these little holders, and then you, um, you, you, like, turn it a tiny bit, you, like, angle it so that it's like this. And then you have this little little scanner thingy that, that's like on the side that you grab out and then you slide it down this little rail. And then as it passes over each metal, it like scans a little chip inside of it, reading which one it is. And then the little scanner, which uh, it kind of looks like a hockey puck, I guess. Um, oh, that looks very bad, but whatever. The little scanner reads out the combination of metals, and then the... <laughs> okay, so Kamen Rider has been going on since... Uh, actually, this year is the 50th anniversary. So it's been going on since 60... No, 71. <laughs> Time... I, I almost thought it was 2011. But, um... So it's been going on for 50 years, and there's been, um... Uh, just 20 Kamen Rider series? Well, it's... It's 22 now. Uh, just after the year 2000. So they've been doing Kamen Rider non-stop since uh, the turn of the millennium. So as you can see, it gets a lot more complicated as they have to find new ideas, but also as like cheap ways they can make like little belts cooler uh, come out. Because, um, let me finish explaining this one first, and then I'll go into the history of Kamen Rider Bones. <laughs> um, but, uh, basically, it scans them, and it will read them out, and the default combo is Taka, or Hawk. Uh, Tora, or Tiger. And Bata, which is Grasshopper, which I'm just going to abbreviate to Hopper because that's uh, that, that's kind of what they do in a lot of the series. Mostly Zero One, but eh. Um, you might think that Grasshopper is very out of place in that combination, but it's because the original Kamen Rider was a Grasshopper. So if... Any of the Kamen Rider series have like a switchable power up kind of things. Uh, if they're ever animal based, uh, Grasshopper will like almost always be part of their starting kit, or at least be one of the first things they get. Just to pay respects for like the original Kamen Rider, and because obviously it is still the Kamen Rider series. But, um, so the initial combo is Takatora Bata. Uh, and then when you scan it, it reads it out Takatora Bata. But if it's a special combo, uh, I think this is the only combo that's not a full set that has a special song, a special theme that plays. So the initial thing is called Tatoba. Butter. <laughs> Taka! Tora! Uh, <clears throat> wait. Taka! Tora! Butter. <laughs> Ta-to-ba. 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 Okay. 
but um besides this uh this initial combo and full combos have this little theme that plays which uh as a side note the music in Comrader is just insanely good um so this combo has a song called tatoba so after he scans it as the metals are like flying up and forming uh his suit um it, it starts singing this little jingle so it goes ta to ba ta to ba ta to ba and then and then he like henshins um uh, uh oh yeah so basically uh taka is red Uh, Tora is yellow. And Bata is green. So I was thinking, since the slime stack shares two out of three colors, I would make a slime stack that's Tatoba combo. But I feel like I need to go more into the Kamerader series now. Um, you know what? Yeah, I will. Um, wait, should I? Would that be too... You know what, I'll, I'll talk about it as I'm... as I'm drawing more. Uh... Okay. So... Wait. Let me, let me explain more of it. So... Hmm. S okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I will explain more. <laughs> um... So in Comrade O's, each color metal represents a specific type of animal. So red is avians or birds. Uh, yellow are, I think, specifically felines. Uh, green are bugs, just generic bugs um blue are sea creatures uh oh i i i messed that up um well what, what are the other colors uh there's gray and those are it, it's it's weird to describe i guess heavy mammals because it's Saigozo, so rhino, gorilla, and elephant. So, b big mammals? Maybe I need to turn my... Okay, that, that's a lot better. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what to call this classification. Um, uh, let's see... Uh, Saigozo, Shaota, Tajador, uh, and then later on, this is a tiny, t very tiny spoiler, but there's also purple, and it's not exactly dinosaurs, but it's extinct. Extinct animals. It just so happens that all the all the things he does use to power up are dinosaurs. Uh and this is like actually his like ultimate power up and it's like raw as hell. <laughs> so wait, yeah, let me let me spoiler talk a tiny bit about it cuz it's it's not actual story spoilers. It's just power up spoilers. Uh it it's what I consider hype spoilers. So like nothing that would like really ruin your experience of the show because it doesn't cover anything like story specific just just oh i'm sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry i dropped my phone uh but it just goes over a moment that's like really hype and cool but oh Rocco, do you not want to hear power up spoilers is that is that it is okay that I go over it? Uh, are you just... 
Are you just ironically going like, bro, how could you spoil this for me? You just completely ruined my experience of the show. Oh, how could you do this? I was actually considering watching Kamen Rider, but now that you spoiled this for me, oh, God. Oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to watch it anymore. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm not ragging on anyone who thinks like that, by the way. I, I understand some people want to go into something like completely blind, and I'm okay with that. I, I just think that some things, uh, for people who like hype moments in series, like it's it's better to tell them about like certain hype things out of context so that they're like, yo, that's that's cool as heck. I, I wanna I wanna see how things get to that point. But uh basically his purple power up is uh uh in, <laughs> it it's funny because it's another thing that has includes a curse word in Spanish, uh like La Puta Castle in the Sky. But it's uh, the three anim- oh, oh, I got it, I got it, boys, I'm, I'm, I'm making it big, I'm making it big, I can, oh, I, I can, wait, how do I, wait, where's, where's the buttons, what, what, where's the buttons, what, oh, 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 there it is. I'm, ma I'm making it big, boys. I'm getting the bots. I'm making it, boys. Yo, Pog Jam, Pog. Bro, Poggers, we're making it. To be fair, I'm far more likely to watch a show if I was dinosaurs. <laughs> Let's go! Uh, but, yeah, the, the ultimate power-up in the show is a dinosaur berserk form. <laughs> so like <laughs> if if that doesn't sound raw as hell to you, like uh you, you gotta get your priority straight, okay? So the headpiece is uh Terra Terra Pterodactyl. That's what it is. Terra I hope to god I'm spelling this right. Dactyl? That sounds about right. Terra trichera, so triceratops. And tirano, or T Rex. T ter oh. Okay, I need to spell it. Wait. Okay, wait. Ty. Tyrana. Sa Saras. Okay, you know what? My bad handwriting is embarrassing me more than my spelling anyways, so that's fine. Rex. Okay, so... The purple ultimate form is called... Uh, puto Tira. Because, uh... Putera Triquera Tirano. So... Uh, pu... Pu... Do... Tira. So the little jingle that plays for this one is Puto Tira Puto Tirano Sauros And uh this form is actually like as sweet as hell. The so um this common rider isn't exactly unique, it's different from a lot of other common riders. In that he doesn't like magically or like technically summon his weapon. His one his weapon is actually loaned to him by this company that's researching the same things he uses to power up. Um but this form the way this form summons his weapon is he straight up like punches into the ground, creating a tiny fissure, and pulls out a hand axe. So I, I can't, I'm not even going to try to illustrate that. Just, just imagine like, like, and then, and then the, the, this is, I don't know, the, this is hand, I guess. No, you know what? Whatever. It's fine. 
but that's the only form where he actually summons the weapon himself. And he he just grabs that from the earth. And uh I I can't say that that's actually story spoilers. Um but it's raw as hell because basically the enemies of the show instead of just straight up exploding they uh they explode into ti- like uh roughly palm sized metal metals uh because oh okay the backstory is that like some alchemist artificially made them so they're artificial life forms and that's it that's all you need to know um but this form uses those metals okay wait let me make that more even whatever that's fine uses those metals to power up the axe and the more he uses it like the str- uh, the stronger the finisher gets and uh and at one point in the show <laughs> he loads that thing with so many metals that he does one swipe with it and the energy that follows it does two full rotations around him and the little energy beam from it is like 10 10 ish feet long and it, it it's just it's just raw it's raw it's cool oh yeah um i feel like okay this this entire stream is just gonna be a Kamen Rider lecture okay i'm actually fine with that because i i love Kamen Rider, but um the reason why a lot of Kamen Riders have animal-based power-ups and things like that is because the original Kamen Rider, um, basically him and his villains were, uh, like, not exactly artificial life forms. They were, like, test subjects who became partially cyborg. It's weird. They use the term Kaizo Ningen, which... A lot of people translate as like cyborg, but um, basically, uh, him, the original Kamen Rider, and the organization he's fighting, Shocker, uh, are are altered humans who also have the traits of animals. So that's why a lot of Kamen Riders will have animal-based like power-ups. Um, also, I feel like I should, hmm. I, I, I really want to talk about how, like, I, I think it's very possible and I want, kind of want them to introduce Kamen Rider into, like, modern Marvel things, because there was a very old Tokusatsu Spider-Man in Japan called Supaidaman, which, like, kind of redundant to say it like that, but that is what it's called. And the original Spidaman actually was kind of the precursor for uh, Power Rangers or Super Sentai in Japan because it came before that and it actually introduced the concept of... of of a ground hero who like has their own transforming mech that they go into to fight like giant monsters. Based Spider-Man. Uh I, I wish I knew how to say the emissary of hell line. Because that that's that's awesome. Uh old school uh old school Showa era Tokusatsu is just marvelous. Like if you if you like old like cheesy 80s era kind of action shows and flicks like you will you will love uh showa era tokusatsu which uh if i need to explain tokusatsu is toku sa su um is a genre 
Oh, wait. I, I didn't put the R. Is a genre that basically encap encapsulates all of the, like, all of the shows and series that are, oh, a guy in a suit, uh, in a skin tight suit fights monsters. So things like, uh, Ultraman, uh, Sentai slash Power Rangers. And Kamen Rider, of course. Um, but let let me. Okay. Um, but one thing that makes sense, but is a little weird to like try to wrap my head around still, is that kaiju movies count as tokusatsu. Because instead of like a guy that looks like a human in a suit fighting monsters, they're they both look like monsters basically, and they fight each other. So it's basically as if Ultraman, like both of them, look like monsters. Um, so technically, things like Godzilla are also tokusatsu. Oh wow, that is not an A. I don't know what that is. Okay. So, uh, oh yeah, uh, I was talking about Showa. So Showa was, uh, you've probably heard this word come up in a couple Japanese games. Uh, maybe if you played Yakuza. Um, Showa was an era in Japan. Uh, Ultraman, Godzilla, and old Power Rangers. Yeah, it's weird. Like... Uh, it's weird because it's specifically the Western VTuber community that has a ton of people into Toku. Like, because, like, in in Eastern VTubers, like, you know, uh, of course, a decent amount of people like Kamen Rider, like, uh, Risu dropped in Ore Sanjo in her debut, which is from Kamen Rider Deno, uh, and what a lot of the hollows do uh, on their karaoke's, they do the openings of a lot of comrader shows and or uh, Sentai shows. And uh, I forget his name, but the blonde guy in Niji Sanji is a huge Toku fan. And he actually has weekly streams of watching Superhero Hour where they play Kamarider and Super Sentai back to back. Uh oh, hello, right? Ooh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a second to try to pronounce that. Ray Ray Ray's okay Raisin okay. I was gonna say Raisin, okay Raisin, okay hello Raisin. Oh, is this supposed to be like Raisin or like Raisin? Okay, what? Well, sorry. Um, a show that. A monster fights men in skin skin suits. Uh maybe. Oh yeah, Garo. I forgot about Garo. How did I forget about Garo? Garo is. Um, I don't know if it's bad to describe it this way, but it's it's kind of edgier common rider. I. Uh, Oh, and Toku suits. Okay, I uh, I don't know if there is a show where the protagonist is a monster. I think Moomin Rider. Oh yeah, Moomin Rider is like, uh, it. Okay, so Kamen Rider is actually funny in that way because it's such a huge series in Japan. You know, like it. Uh, it has a huge um. A uh, cultural impact in Japan. Because it's been super big since, you know, 71. Um, and before you get into it or, like, are aware of it, you see all of these references to it that you just don't know are references. Uh, I, I think it's kind of like JoJo Part 3 in that way. It has such a high cultural impact. But, like, 
it's so easy to see all the references to it without knowing like the actual source material. Because a Kamen Rider, let me make another layer for this. A Kamen Rider references, if a dude has a motorcycle or a bike, a, a mask, and a red, red scarf, I guess. Like, if they have any, any two of these three traits, they're most likely a Kamerader reference. Oh my god. My handwriting only gets sl <laughs> sloppier. And, uh... Yeah, they really are inescapable. Like, it's so... It, it's so strange to think about. Like, oh yeah, also a, a, a pose with Henshin. So if they have, like, any combination of these things, it's like 99% a Kamen Rider reference. And it's so easy to like... Because here in the West, Kamen Rider is a very, very niche thing. You know, even Sentai is pretty niche with how... Even though uh, Power Rangers is super, super popular and well-known. Well, popular as a childhood thing. But, uh, yeah, my point stands. Uh... It, it, it's so weird because it feels like by the time you find out what Kamen Rider is, you've already unknowingly seen so many references to it. Like... Like, in your mind, just... It, you think... I, I think Red Scarf and Henshin are probably the, the biggest ones to, like, that stick in your mind. Like... Even just thinking about uh, all the Japanese content throughout the years that's, that's had this in some way, it's like, oh man, really? All of that was a Kamen Rider reference? Like, wow. How did I never know what Kamen Rider was? How, how is it that big? Yeah, I've never heard of it. Like, I think that's kind of interesting that there are series in certain areas that are so big and have such a big cultural impact that it it gets into the roots of a lot of people's work, but other areas and countries don't know about it because, like, it, it's just not that popular there. Like, I, I do know Comrader is pretty big in SEA because I think some countries dub it. And... I, I think Kamen Rider Black specifically, what, and Black RX, I guess, was very popular in Brazil for, I, I don't know, it's probably cheap for the stations to like acquire the licenses for it, uh, but besides that, like, Kamen Rider really doesn't have a cultural, like, foot in any, uh, uh in a lot of countries outside of Japan. Well, outside of East Asia. Um, wait, how did I start talking about this? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, other notes. What was I talking about? Uh, Tokusa. Oh, okay. Showa. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Showa is the name of an era in Japan because, uh, for some reason, in uh, for Toko series, we kind of just agree that um the different series are separated by these eras, which these uh these eras in Japan are um it indicated by the rule. I I guess the. I don't know if rule is the right word because they're mostly figureheads now of the emperor. So, uh, the current era is 
Oh wait, that's not the right button. Uh, Currents era is Rewa. Um, which started in 2020, yes. The era before that was Heisei. Which Heisei, I think, is about... It's 80-something to 2020. 80-something to 2020. And Showa era was, like... I don't know, post-war to the 80s. Um, yeah, you might have heard Showa era or Heisei come up in the Yakuza series. I've never played the game, so I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure Yakuza 0 does take place in, like, the turn of this era. Because, um, I think Yakuza 0 takes place within the, the economic bubble in 80s Japan. So, uh, Showa probably pops up a couple times. Um, but uh, the, the gist I was getting at was that Showa is kind of like old school cheesy action shows. Oh wait, I didn't put a C in that. So, uh, kind of think things like, um, maybe not to this level, but kind of, uh, Adam West Batman. So cheesiness, like, kind of on that level, and also things like, uh, 80s, okay, I'm gonna put this in quotes, detective shows, because, um, they, they didn't do a lot of detecting, it's, it's a lot of asking around and chasing people and shooting people, and that's about it, but, um, it's, it's on a similar level of cheesiness. Which, if... I, I mean, I, I think it still has its own place. Uh, I don't think there's a good way to say, like, oh, this is... The, the new stuff is better than Showa era. Because it's different, you know? It's... Y you can't compare things that are, like, 50 years apart by the same standards. Like, it was literally a, a different era. Like... People's taste in media changed so much, but um, basically what I'm saying is that the old shows had a very, very different tone. Um, let me let me uh cut. Okay, so Kamen Rider Black, I I think uh Kamen Rider Black RX was technically in the Showa era. But because it was a continuation of... It was a direct sequel to Comrade Black, which was in the Showa era, this kind of counts. People uh, count this as Showa, even though it's not. Because it's kind of weird saying that, oh yeah, the direct sequel of this show like, like, as in, it takes place literally right after the original run, uh, is a completely different era, because the era kind of marks a tone shift also. Um, what was my point in this? Oh yeah, Black RX introduced a lot of things that would be used later in, in the other Heisei series. So, uh, Black RX introduced multiple forms.
Wow, this is really just turning into a Kamen Rider lecture. Should I should I rename the stream? <laughs> should I just rename the stream into Kamen Rider lecture and doodling? Uh, I'll think about it. Okay. Um. So the multiple forms. Uh. I think was he also the first that summoned a weapon? I I think so. Perhaps. I uh, I I'll. I I think I might. Oh, it's interesting. Good. I like. I I hope that hearing me rants, well, not rant, ramble about Kamen Rider is interesting. Uh. Oh wait, I spelled doodling wrong. Doodling and Kamen Rider. Lecture. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, I think Black RX also introduced, um, su summoning weapons. Because I think before that, each Kamen Rider just used. It either had the weapon, like, on them, or, like, attached to their belt, but Kamen Rider Black RX literally pulls, like, a lightsaber out of the middle of his belt. Um, and I'm pretty sure... I, I haven't watched all of the Showa-era Kamen Riders yet, um, because it, uh, I, I kind of want to keep up with the new ones. Um, and... But I, I will watch it before watching Decade, which it that that's complicated, so I'll drop it for now. But uh I'll watch it I'll watch them all one day. But um Black RX, even though it is kind of counted as a show us show, uh it was technically made in Heisei era. So they did introduce like a couple new things that became series mainstays in uh lighter uh his other two forms were i think uh i, I forget if he had two or three other forms but bio rider oh no what is that e oh that's a giant okay whatever and i think robo rider So Bio Rider's power is, I, I, okay. Again, I haven't watched this, so I don't exactly know. I've just watched like clips of like cameos and stuff that he's had later in the series. Um, but Bio Rider can kind of turn into water. I, I guess he can perfectly manipulate like his cells and stuff, maybe. But basically, he can't be contained because he just turns into water. Uh, so this is kind of like his speed form, I guess. In Robo Rider, he turns more metallic and gains the power of gun. The strongest power of all. So this is kind of like slow and, and power form. Um... I what what was my point with this? Um basically Black RX, even though it's uh ki kind of has an identity crisis between the two eras, um you can tell it did definitely have an influence on the rest of the Heisei era because of these new additions that became uh series staples. Which, again, not every series has, like, these. You know, some of them don't have... I, I don't think any series has neither of them. I think each Heisei series has one, at least. But... Uh, yeah, whatever. Th that's not the point. 
I don't know what the point is anymore. Um. Oh, I I'm just I'm just talking about it, and I don't even know why I'm talking about it. <laughs> uh let me think. Okay. So, oh man, the file size is getting bigger every time I open a new layer. <laughs> uh, um. Let let me think. Is there other stuff I should talk about? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I should talk about Comrader Amazons. Because yes, there is specifically a difference between Comrader. Oh wait, I drew that way too big. Between Comrader Ama. Zon and Emma Zons, which it might be a Z. I'm not sure if an S, it's an S or Z, but there's a difference. This is technically okay. So this is Showa era. And this was so gory that, um, oh wait, I spelled gory wrong, didn't I? This was so gory at the time that, like, parents called in and went like, you cannot show this on public television. Uh, you know, by modern standards, we laugh at it because it's like, like, not even, like, barely dismemberment, you know? It's, like, a lot of blood and, like, a little bit of gashes and stuff. But, um, at the time, it was so much that parents called in and went, like, you can't show this. And I think it's the shortest Showa series because of that. Um, Amazons is actually an Amazon-funded uh, collaboration. <laughs> Not exactly collaboration, they just funded it, and it's exclusive to Amazon Prime Video in Japan. But Amazon Japan funded. So, uh, this was a remake made uh, in the late 20-teens, I don't remember exactly when, but... Uh, they went all in on, like, the dark, gory kind of things. Uh, it, it kind of has that bad... You know how games in the late 2000s all had that weird, like, brown filter on them? Like, you know, uh... I, I think some of the Gears of War games... Um... What was I thinking of specifically? I think Fallout 3 had a big complaint. This has like a big gray filter on it to drive home like, oh, this is, this is, uh, a bleak. This is, this is a dreary. Oh my god. I... Okay. But, um, uh, they, they really doubled down on like, oh, you know what? Amazon has, uh, this reputation for like being the most, like, Ugh, like blood and gore and guts of the original uh, Comraders. So they kind of just straight up they, they straight up went like, yeah, let's go all in on that. Uh, and like the monsters and the people are all products of like this virus. And the Comraders, I think, have like a very distilled kind of version of the virus. I don't know. I only watched the first episode and it was so slow paced and the visuals look so bad because again they had this like gray filter that things just did not look good you know so I, I only watched the first episode I, I I just bring this up because I think I think it's kind of hilarious that 
Kamen Rider Amazons became a thing ju only because, like, Amazon Japan went like, Oh yeah, our company is named Amazon. You have a series named Amazon. We, we, can, we can do something with this, you know? Uh, I, I just think that's hilarious and, like, kind of dumb that they made, like, an entire series out of it. Um, this is... S semi officially recognized because um again it's like pretty decently gory and stuff uh i mean by american standards it's honestly really not that gory at all but um where did my cursor go Oh, there it is. Um, but you know, obviously, mainline Comrade series are made to sell kid kids toys, and as a result, they can't really bring up this Amazon Prime exclusive, like, gory series that much. Um, which <sighs> should I start talking about Zio? Because I didn't... Uh, okay, no. I won't talk about Zio. I'll talk about the, that movie, though. So, wait. Uh, hmm. There's too much to talk about. There's too much to talk about. Okay. So, uh, Kamerader G.O. Uh, is an anniversary series that has a clock motif. So, the way the riders transform are by ride watches. So, and blah, blah, blah. That's not important. Uh, basically, there's a movie where the main antagonists are people who use names of the kind of lost or forgotten Heisei series. So one represents Black RX, one represents Amazons. Oh, shady. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Shady, thank you for the raid. Oh, wow. Wait, what were you, what were you playing? I didn't even know... Uh... Yeah, what are you playing? I'm sorry, I'm giving a lecture on Kamen Rider, basically. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's uh, it'll be interesting for your raid. But, yo, what's poppin'? Strategios? Strategios? Oh, Ultra Kill. Oh. God, that, that looks so fast-paced. Oh, you're interested in Kamen Rider too? Oh my gosh. I, I, uh, I, uh, it's... <laughs> You know what, uh, how about, uh, do you, do you have any specific request on what you want to know about Kamen Rider at all? Do you know about Kamen Rider at all? Do you want to know a good, uh, starting point into the series? Where to start? Okay, good. Everyone's watching Kamen Rider lately. I would be happy if they did. That'd be very cool. Okay. So... Uh, first, let me ask, what is your experience with Tokusatsu sh series? Which, can I pull this up? Yes, Tokusatsu. So, uh, if you don't know, Tokusatsu is the genre that's basically just men in skin-tight suits fighting monsters. So, a lot of people's background in Tokusatsu is just watching Power Rangers. Uh, only watch the original Gridman. Okay, that's fine. In the anime. Okay, that's fine. So, that's basically the easiest point. Uh, I'm just trying, trying to make sure that you have some sort of, of an idea of what tokusatsu is. Uh, and that you don't go like, oh, isn't that like Power Rangers? Isn't that just people fighting in suits? You know? Like, I, I obviously know you're not going to be at that level. But I'm just trying to see, like, 
how, how much experience you have with the genre. So, I'm gonna have to get into Comrade because <laughs> you kill him. Power Rangers are cool too. Okay. Also, hello, uh, Strategos and Sarjaner. Uh, Power Rangers, I, I think Power Rangers is actually pretty decently cool too. I, I think it's hilarious that in Power Rangers Time Force, one of the Rangers is just straight up Virgil from Devil May Cry. <laughs> and so for the Power Rangers fighting game, when they added his character as DLC, he did a bunch of lines that are just basically what lines people would want him to say as Virgil. So one of his lines when he activates his super is, I need more quantum power. <laughs> So it's <laughs> uh he's um he's the quantum ranger in Time Force. He's the second red ranger in Time Force. Yes, Virgil Devil May Cry is a is literally a power ranger, okay? That's that's official, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Virgil Devil May Cry. De Virgil, son of Sparta, is a Power Ranger. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Virgil, Devil May Cry. Yes, just like John Halo <laughs> and Samus Metro. <laughs> My favorite character is Sans Undertale. Sans Undertale. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, but what? Um, okay, so a good starting point into Kamen Rider. So, um, I'll recommend a few series and then give a rough introduction to them. Uh, first I'll talk about the OG Kamen Rider, the original. Uh, Kamen Rider, uh, he didn't have an official title in the original one, but, uh, in the years since then, he is now called Ichigo, or... You know, the first one. Um, so, the original Kamen Rider, this is the 50th anniversary of Kamen Rider. So, uh, actually, so it released all the way back in 1971. Uh, the original Kamen Rider, um, actually, okay, I'm gonna put that aside. Uh, I I'm getting a little off track in my thoughts. Okay, so the gist about Kamen Rider is that he was captured by a um I'm I'm not sure if I can say this word on Twitch, but a certain a splinter faction of a World War II uh party um uh shares some origins with uh I I guess in a way Ca Captain America what what's what's that guy's faction called the the Red Skull guy is it just called Red Skull um I don't know it's similar to Red Skull uh, as in it's a splinter faction of that war World War Hi Hydra that's what it's called Hydra okay yeah yeah Hydra Hydra so um he's captured by a splinter faction of that uh, party, and they're called Shocker. And their goal is, you know, very generic, old school, like, ah, uh, we, we will rule the world. We will use our power to take over Earth. Okay? So, uh, he's actually captured and becomes a... undergoes surgery and body modification to become a Kaizo Ningen, or a cyborg. And all of the cyborgs that Shocker makes are uh, animal-themed. So the one he got was um, a grasshopper. Okay? Uh... So you'll see Grasshopper as a reoccurring motif throughout the years of Kamen Rider. Um, so 
they completely modified his body, but they had yet to complete the brainwashing procedure on him yet. And the reason why he uh, did not undergo the bra brainwashing procedure is because it turns out his college professor was the head of these um, modification procedures. Yes, that is why they are bug men, because uh, the original Kamen is supposed to be uh, grasshopper themed. That's also why a lot of their finishers are kicks, when in a lot of other action series, you know, kicks aren't usually um, like seen as a big thing. Because kicks typically aren't seen as like super, super manly in like a media type of setting. Usually it's like punches or with weapons, things like that. But that's uh, that's why the finishers in Kamen Rider tend to be kicks. Um, so, uh, he was actually freed by his college professor. Um, and that's why he didn't go under the, uh, mind control procedure. Um, I I'm trying to organize my thoughts real quick. Uh, so, uh, the gist I'm trying to get at with he all of this is that every Kamen Rider... Which, uh, I'm not even going to write that. Uh, common Riders, the way that they're different from a lot of other to uh, tokusatsu series, is that every common Rider uses the same powers as the antagonist. Same powers as bad guys. So, every single series, uh, the Kamen Rider will be something like this. Which, it, it indeed is a recipe for Kino. Because actually, later on in the series, uh, they have it where the main antagonists are other Kamen Riders. So, and there's even a Kamen Rider where the whole plot is literally just a Holy Grail war from Fate, if you know that. Like, just the last one standing gets a wish. Um, um, yes, so this is uh, the gist I'm getting at. These are just reoccurring uh, themes. So, comrades always have the same, use the same powers as uh, the antagonists do. Uh, you will see grasshopper and animal imagery reoccur a lot. Um... And that's it. Oh, a bit of Forze, and there's a rival writer in that. Oh yeah, I heard that, um... I, I think people said that Velik was having a Kamen Rider watch along in her Discord, something like that. Oh, uh, Forze? I... Is one of the series I would recommend as a starter point. But, um, let me... Let, let me get into different stuff first. Yeah, uh... Uh, I think in Forze, okay, wait, let me, let me not go into a tangent about Forze, but, um, ooh, all right, wait, I, I need water, I'm talking too much. Okay, so, uh, first choice for, uh, beginning, uh, recommending a starting point. Uh, I wouldn't say that the original Comrader is the best starting point. Uh, if you want to get into the series, I would recommend at least watching the first episode or two, just to see the kind of things that pop up throughout the series like this. For example, the first enemy that they fight in the original Comrader is a spider. So, you'll see spiders reappear throughout the series as either the first enemy or as uh, a major antagonist uh, throughout the rest of the series to just play homage, to, to pay homage to the original series. Um, okay. Um, so, 
the rest of the Showa era, so like the 70s and 80s ones, I really can't recommend as starting points. Mostly because uh, it'll be very... just very hard to get into from like a modern uh, standpoint. But uh, the first I would recommend from Heisei onwards, which is the year 2000 onwards, uh, would be the first one, Comrader Kuga. Ku okay, let me rewrite this a little bit. Ku ga. So this one is actually beetle themed. It's modeled after a a stag beetle. Yes, stag beetle. That's the one with the pincer horns, I think. Um, Comrade Kuga is one of the slower burning series. It's more of a deconstruction, or I, I guess deconstruction. I don't know the exact word for it. Oh, popular beetle. Yeah, beetles are just cool, you know. Uh, oh yeah, stag beetles are very popular in Japan. Um, wait, I need more water. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so it's more of a deconstruction or a toku played straight. Because uh, they, they do go for a more realistic approach. Not exactly perfectly realistic, but it, it's more realistic. Um, the, the, the police actually exist in this series. The police exist. And not only do the police exist... They help the main rider out, because they know that he's the only guy who can permanently pit down these monsters that are cropping up. Um, it's a little bit more, more of a cop drama than like an action uh, tokusatsu show. Uh, more of a cop drama. So... Uh, like, the main cop that helps out the rider, like, he even gets bogged down in, like, bureaucratic stuff. Like, the higher-ups tell him, Oh, we don't know if this guy is actually trying to help us out, or if he's just a mindless monster like the others, you know? They even get into bureaucratic stuff like, Uh, oh yeah, I can help you, just not officially, because the higher-ups, like, won't like it. You know, I can lend you all this equipment because you're the one who can make the best use of it. Just we can't tell anybody, you know. Um, uh, they even have things like... They have news reports of, like, body counts. Oh yeah, this is uh, ki kind of realistic. Uh, no magic, but his power isn't based in science either um it's his power is sourced from ancient like ancient bs you know uh ancients powers a spirit uh kind of, it, it's weird so basically um Uh, he's friends with this, like, archaeologist dig team in this college. Um, and... And basically, he is just... They opened up this, like, cursed coffin, like, think Dio and stuff, and they accidentally unleashed, like, and awoke all of the monsters that are now going after people. And he's the one who ended up with the belt. And the belt is uh, the same belt as the original human warrior used to take down those monsters and seal them. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's ki kind of strange. But um, uh, I would recommend... Kamerider Kuga, the first of the Heisei series, which let me pit the dates. 
2000. Uh, if you do not want to see one, that's like, ooh, guys in tights just fighting monsters, explosions, fun. Uh, I mean, it is fun, but it's just very slow burning. Um, uh, if you want to see something that's more like, how would people actually react if, you know, there's suddenly this one guy who could take down these monsters that are straight up immune to bullets, like um, immune to modern weaponry. Like, we, we can't even use missiles on them either because of collateral damage. They go inside cities, like next to uh, civilians and everything. So it's like, how do we take these things down? We have to rely on like this one guy. Uh, so it, if you want to see something more like that than just the typical like, oh, I've I've seen a lot of just, you know, guys fighting and explosions a lot. Yeah, I I would definitely recommend watching this one like afterwards. Uh, that that's kind of why I asked your starting point, but I still started with this anyways. But uh, this is something I would recommend more to someone who's very familiar with Tokusatsu, or if you watched like a lot of Power Rangers when you were younger. And it's like, uh, comrade, it, it wouldn't that just be Power Rangers with one guy? Uh, this this would be more for uh people like that. Uh, I don't remember what I was saying with very. Um, oh, I also wrote that on that layer, um, eraser. Um, oh, this pen is not supposed to be that font size. Okay. Um, uh, Ryuki is another one. Well, uh, it's not, uh, all of them are very popular, but Ryuki is one that gets a lot of clout and credit for a couple things. This is the one that followed Agito, so this is 2002. 2002. Let me clean up that too. So, this is more of a straight-up action show. This is the first one to introduce multiple riders. Well, not multiple riders. Uh... Enemy riders? The the first of riders as the main antagonist. Yes, Ruki has a very good design. Um his motif is dragon. Um I think Earlier on, uh, before, like, you know, maybe 10 years or so, this was probably the show with the biggest following in the West, because it did actually have a Western adaptation as, uh, Dragon Knight. Uh oh, I accidentally opened that up. Dragon Knight. Which uh, is pretty much what Ryuki literally translates to. It's supposed to be Ryu, Dragon, and then Ki as Knight. Um, Dragon Knight, uh, Western Adaptation. So, Ryuki is the first where the main villains and stuff are other Kamen Riders. Uh, the gimmick... Uh, this is also arguably the first show to have a gimmick for their belt. The gimmick for this is cards. So they use a deck of cards to power up and to use their special powers. Um, so they basically pull a card out of their belt and then scan it wherever their scanner is to summon like swords, shields, or to use their final vent, which is like their finisher. Um, a decent amount of drama, kind of. De decent amount of drama. 
Uh, this I I would recommend watching. Uh, for hmm. How how would I say this? I I'll, uh as a warning, I haven't watched this one yet. But um, let me think. Uh, a lot of fighting in this show. Uh, if you want to see a lot of cool suit designs, because most of the, like, other fighters are also Kamen Riders, uh, watch this one. Uh, definitely the special effects have not held up, because it's from 2002, but it's still decently cool. Um... Uh, basically watch this if you want to see what fate would be like if instead of getting servants, people got, like, super-powered suits. Yeah, I guess. If you want to see people with superpowers just, like, go crazy and try to kill each other so that they can get a wish, then I guess watch this one. Uh, this show also has a mirror motif, uh, where they fight people or, like, inside a mirror dimension. They, like, touch mirrors and go inside the mirror world. Um. Yeah. Hmm. I, I don't know what else I should say about it. Oh, um, for Kamen Rider Z.O., the latest anniversary series... They, uh, they have a continuation. They made a continuation of the show almost two full decades after the original run ended. So, uh, they have a continuation as, I think, a web series? Y you can, I, I mean, you, y you can find these things decently easily. You hear about Zeal a bit? Uh, it, it's pretty recent, and it, I think it still had a movie come out, like, pretty recently. But, um, yeah, you, you probably hear about it a lot because it's an anniversary series. Which, those are the worst places to start, because literally the entire series is about the other Kamen Riders before it. Uh, so don't, never start with those. The series you do not start with are Z.O. and Decade. Um, decade. Do do not do do not start. Do not. Uh. What else? Oh yeah, there's a continuation in Zio that kind of wraps up the show because, well, I I won't. I won't spoil the ending of the original show, but it it doesn't have a satisfying ending. It, it's a very sad ending that leaves you go like, ah, like, oof. Uh, which even saying that is probably too many spoilers, but sorry. Um, but know that that's not like the final ending. There is a final definitive ending that came out a couple years ago. Which, actually, seeing all of the effects redone with, like, modern CG and stuff, they look beautiful. Like, seeing uh, the the final vent, the finisher rider kick with modern CG looks very, very good. Um, So, Ryuki... Uh, where is my... Did I turn that off? Did it lose tracking? Okay. Ryuki, I would recommend if you want to see I I guess a most a mostly action and conflict heavy series. And if you want to see a lot of very cool finishers. Like for example, the main guy's finisher is he's dragon themed. So what he does is that he summons a dragon that he jumps up into the air and then the dragon breathes fire onto him 
to propel him and rocket him into the enemy with a kick. And then I think the secondary rider is uh, is bat themed, like he's straight up like Batman. Uh, and it, it's funny because he's literally a dark knight. He's a bat themed, like dark colored, uh, not dark colored. I I forget his color scheme is either dark blue or black, but uh, he's like a literal western knight. Uh, and his finisher is the bat attaches to his back as wings as a cape and then he jumps forward and the cape uh completely envelops him and turns him into a drill and he just like rushes into the enemy <laughs> which it probably sounds like it looked like crap but uh in the redone series it looks like actually threatening um so yeah, Ryuki I recommend for uh if you want to see a lot of hype stuff, a lot of cool fights and just just fighting, you know. Um uh, a lot of people say that they recommend W, but I I I don't know. I haven't watched that much of W, so I don't know if I can agree. W is kind of like eh. I haven't finished W, by the way, so I, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, I, I will, okay, yes. I will definitely recommend Comrade or Forze. This uh, Comrade or Forze, I would recommend if you want something that's the closest to live action anime out there. Closest to anime. Uh, oh, God. My handwriting is just getting sloppier and sloppier. Closest to anime. Because not only does Kamen Rider Forze take place in a high school setting, not only is it like super upbeat uh, and friendly, Kamen Rider Forze was written by the Gurn Lagan writer. Oh, you're a little halfway done with Forze. Okay, you're watching with a friend. Okay, okay. Yes, it's very, very fun. I haven't finished it myself, but it's... Oh, <laughs> written by... Yep. It's written by the Gurn Lagan writer. So, you know, the drill punch... Well, I think it's drill kick, right? Yeah. So the drills, the space, the hype, the friendship... Like, G Gurn Lagan writer explains a lot about Forze. Okay, so good. Um... Oh, what other ones would I recommend as a starting point? Um, hmm. Uh, I, I, I guess, wait, don't tell me I forgot what it was called. Zero, zero one. Zero one is the most recent completed series. Uh, so this is... 2021. Well, 2020. This is the 2020 series. So this one is mostly standalone. Uh, this is the first series after the anniversary series of Zio. So, uh, and it's the first of the Reiwa era. So they want to make it very standalone. Um, the uh, plot point of this uh are cyborgs not cyborgs androids androids i have to remind myself there's a difference um so the whole plot of zero one is that uh consumer grade like consumer level uh androids are very accessible and they're like just out there like pretty much everyone has them uh and the main character is the grandson of the inventor of these robots. And after his uh, grandfather dies, he inherits the company unknowingly. Um, uh, the, the kind of... Um, what, what should I say? The theme of the series? Yes, 
the theme. The theme of this series is... I, I guess inheritance? Maybe? Because again, it's the first of its era, and uh, a lot of the show goes on about characters dealing with the baggage they carry from the past and shedding it, and like growing as people from that. Um, watch this if you want to see the best special effects so far. Um, if you want to see hype as hell things. And if you want to see a very angry guy just defeat almost everybody with just pure rage. Um, <laughs> it's funny because uh, uh, he, he actually has a YouTube channel where he streams and he's like such a chill guy. Uh, I forget his name, but... Uh, He's called Kamen Rider Vulcan in the show. So, uh, I just recommend this as a starting point because it... You basically need to know nothing about it. The theme is very modern, with it having to do with robots. Uh, it kinda has to do with robot rights too, I guess? Maybe? I don't know. Uh... Yeah, just watch this if you want to see, like, really cool hype stuff. And, like, the first episode, uh, to let you know that the main villains aren't messing around, they have one of the bad guys just, like, straight up laugh, like, hook, hook his arm around, uh, uh, another robot. Like, you know, a friendly kind of like, hey, get over here. And it's like their neck is, like, in, uh, in the pit of your arm. And he just pulls out a pistol and blows that robot's brains out. Like, non-existent, like, like, Gears brains out. And it's like, oh, okay, I thought this was a kid show. If that was a guy, then oh, that would not pass. Uh, if that was a human, that would not pass. But, uh, uh I would say just maybe watch the, f the first episode of Zero One and see if you're interested in it. I would say that Zero One overall is very good, like maybe an 8 out of 10. Uh, it's just that uh, in the middle, it slogs quite a bit. Uh, this this show kind of has a tournament arc that lasts, I think, 8 episodes. So it, it drags on those 8 episodes. But it's very, still very good. Um... Yeah, just this just the most modern. Uh I guess those would be my main picks for like first watches. Um I I don't know what else I would recommend as like a very first one. Hmm. I don't. Hmm. I don't think I can really recommend O's as a first. Writing all of them down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, I'll talk about Kabuto a little bit, and see if you are interested. Oh wait, that's not a K. Kamen Rider Kabuto. I I think this is the 2007 series. Um. Uh, the guy's gimmick is that he is a Hercules beetle. And. Um. Honestly, the like. Purely the only reason why I even got interested in watching this one is because the main gimmick of this show is having slow-mo fights. So fights where the two people fighting 
are like sped up in super speed, while everything around them is slowed down to a crawl. Like the first time they show off the super speed is... Not the first time. The second time they show off the super speed is a fight in the rain. And... <laughs> And even for the time, like, it looked amazing because you just see this guy just suddenly turn on hyperspeed mode and you see as the rain droplets just slow down before it's just stopping midair. And then you see him just slowly walk forward, like, towards the monster and just start, like, kicking him. And he kicks him into the floating raindrops. Uh, and I honestly, that's that's the entire reason why I recommend this one because it's just the the fights look cool as hell because of that, like like just seeing everything slow down to a crawl. Like they have they have fights where a building is literally like collapsing, rubble is coming down, and then they activate that, and just the rubble freezes in midair. And they, like, use that to kick to each other. Uh, like, kick the rubble into each other. Or, like, uh, jump off of them. It's... It's just super, super cool. Just, just cool. It's cool. That, that's it. That, that's the entire reason. Uh. <laughs> cool. Yes. Um, uh, hmm, what else? Oh, obviously, I have to, I have to talk about Deno. Den-o. Uh, I think this is the one right after Kabuto? Wait. I, I think this was the one right after Kabuto. So this would be around 2008? Um... Okay, this is gonna sound strange. The main gimmick of this one is trains. And time travel. So, uh... It, it's... It's very hard to explain. Um... The... The, the main... Uh, mm, Mm -hmm. How how do I explain this? Um Apparently in the future, according to this show, in the future there are time traveling trains. Uh why exactly they're trains, I don't know. But um Yeah. Uh uh basically uh, th the plot in this show is basically non-existent. Uh, Two-thirds or three-quarters of the way into the show, they literally have to invent a final boss, like, out of nowhere for the main character to defeat. And, like, the final boss has absolutely zero charisma or character whatsoever. And it's so obvious th that they made them just because they're, like, Wait, how are we gonna end the show? We we don't have like a big bad to to fight. Um but instead it's very character focused because the cast is amazing. Um one of the biggest things about this show is that the main character you you see his growth throughout the series because when he transforms, he's he himself does not fight. He has the spirits of other people take control of his body to fight for him. Uh, and as the series goes on, his final form is him after he's learned to fight by himself. And uh it's just it's just good it's just good very very character very character focused 
Um, Edda's an, an amazing cast. Oh, that's actually dope. It, it's, it's very strange, but very cool. Because, oh yeah, the main character is also an insanely good actor. Because when he's not in the transformed suit, um, the other spirits still take over his body so that they can like do things in in real life. Um, and so he has to completely change his personality and how he acts while still looking more or less the same, just with different hair. So he does this so well at like conveying his body language and his personality of conveying those of the other characters that you at like him being possessed by the other people like you you never doubt it for a second you never doubt like oh yeah nah he's really not feeling it not once do you think that ever in the show when he gets possessed by them he, it's like oh yeah that that's that character Yup. Like, he, uh, actually, this show, uh, pit him in the spotlight so much that now he's an insanely popular actor in Japan. And he was so booked that for so many years, uh, they could not book him to act for the anniversary seasons because he was already booked filming other things um and in the most recent one he only has a, a, a little bit of screen time but he does have a good amount of screen time um this is hands down the most popular series in Japan this like, like you know how Final Fantasy VII is the most popular Final Fantasy, and how Ocarina of Time is the most popular Zelda game? This is that levels of popular within Kamen Rider, in Japan at least. Because they are still milking this series with collabs with other series. Over 12 years later, they're still having this specific one have collaborations with other media. It's insane. Um, I, I will say the popularity is well-earned because... Well-earned? Because it's... It, it's... It, it's... It's good. I mean, the plot is basically non-existent, but it's a series about time travel, so in my opinion, I would rather have the plot be non-existent than be just overly complicated, like, oh, how how did that happen? Well, the, the way they established time travel works, wouldn't he just destroy himself by doing that in the pe Like, I, I'd rather they just not get into things like that. You know, this is just fun. That's that's the ba best way to describe this series. It's just fun. Like, when you watch this show, it, it feels like you're just hanging out with, like, really cool friends and having fun, you know? You feel like you're having just a good time. Uh, it's, it's just, yeah, that's it. Yeah, don't, don't go into this expecting, like, super overly complicated flashy fights. Don't go into this expecting, like, super, I, I mean, there's a decent amount of drama in this, but don't go into expecting, like, oh, like, 
love triangles. Like, oh my god, what? How is this person gonna react to that? Which, it, it's weird that I have to say that, but there are a couple Kamen Rider series like that. Um. Uh. Oh, definitely. Deno, yes. Deno is. Is just comfy. Yes, I would say that, Ringo. Like. Yeah, I, I would say that watching it is just. Just fun. You, you just watch it and it. It's just good. You know? Also, it has an absolute banger of an opening. Like. I, I think. Pretty much everyone that grew up with this series in Japan has this song like etched into their soul. Like they they will know it until the day they die. Um the the song is called Climax Jump. Climax Jump. And this song is like it's a straight earworm. I'm not gonna lie. It, it does get stuck in your head. I've been talking too much. It's very, very just, it's just good. Yeah, don't, don't expect, don't go into the series expecting like, Oh, is this gonna have like a tearjerker, like, uh, a melancholy ending? Is it gonna, is it gonna have like a, a tragically like sad but optimistic ending? Uh, is it, it, it's just, it's just good. Just, this is arguably the most like kid showy of all the common writers. But it does it so well that I don't mind at all. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just, just fun. It's just fun. Um... Yes, it, it's very nice to just go like, oh my god, all, all of this, all these things making me think too much and it's like making me sad with it's like, oh my god, I can't believe this person betrayed this person when they both wanted the same thing in the end. Like, oh, I can't stand all this tragedy. Sometimes you just want to sit down and go like, yeah, this, this is fun. You know? Like, n not everyone wants to s Yeah. I... I... I do highly recommend this. Just don't... Yeah. Just don't expect it to be something it's not. Uh... Are there any others I would recommend as a first series? Uh, oh, you think you'll watch this one after fours? I think that's actually perfect because tonally, I think it'll flow very well. Because, uh, actually, uh, if you want me to talk about the uh, Kuga distilled enough to be a first, yes, Kuga is standalone enough to be decent for a first. I'll um, uh, I'll see if I I still have that layer. Well, if I know which layer that is. Um. Okay, here's my nib. Um, Kuga, yes. Um, here. Yeah, uh, Kuga, I would say, uh, Kuga is very good if you've, if you've, uh, 
If you already know a decent amount of tokusatsu, like if you grew up watching Power Rangers, uh, and you're like, I, I really just don't want to see just guys in suits beating monster up monsters up every week. Like I, I want, I want something that shows me how this genre could be different. This is kind of more like a deconstruction. It shows a fairly realistic depiction of what would actually happen if a bunch of like bullet bullet immune monsters appeared that only a single guy could fight. Because they do have police in the show, which are pretty much absent in nearly every Toku show. Uh, and they actually help out. They cooperate with with the protagonist because he's the only guy who can br bring these e things down. Um. Oh yeah, I w I was talking. I was going to talk about Forze a little bit. I think I deleted that layer because I uh. Because you said you're already watching it. Um. Forze. Oh, I opened that layer on in a r weird order. But, um, Forze, actually, the reason why it's so upbeat is because it was the 2011 series. And so it was made in the aftermath of the tsunami and earthquake. So they figured after, you know, the worst natural disaster they've had in a very long time, they're like, you know what? Let's have just a happy series to just keep people upbeat. Let's not remind people of like any like super sad things that might be going on in their life. Let's give everybody a little bit of escapism. So that's why it's very like anime-ish. That's why it takes place in a high school setting, you know. Um it yeah yeah basically that's why it's it's much much more upbeat than the typical Kamen Rider series because it was is after you know that stuff oh no my cup my water um uh, is there anything else I should talk about with Forze or any other Kamen Rider? Hmm. Uh, I don't think I have anything to talk about with Forze after that. Um. Uh, but, but yes, going, going back to Kuga, I would definitely recommend Kuga as a first. But only if you're already very experienced with tokusatsu, or just guys in suits fighting monsters. Um, because that will show you that it, it can be different, you know. Uh, not every show is just fighting a different monster every week. Not every show is just, oh, these people just get powers and, you know, nobody questions it. It's, it's just that way now. Uh, they they do have police. They do have people that actually die. There are consequences. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm not sure if this is exactly a good starting series, but this is one of my favorite. Uh, Kamerad O's, and I don't actually remember which year this was uh this was after w which i think was 2009 so i think this was 2010 because this was between w and uh forze and i know i keep switching between saying forze and fours but that's because my mind is dumb um this mostly I mu I like it because the music is amazing. 
because um the main character every time he activates a quote unquote full combo uh with his forms uh each of those forms has a different uh musical theme that plays with it and they're all very good um the opening theme is also very, very good. It is called... What is it called? Count the medals. One, two, and three. Life goes on. Anything goes coming up. Bows. What is the song called? Wait a second. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to look it up. Uh I concede. Okay. Common Rider O's opening. O's op opening. What is it called? Anything goes right. Anything goes. Um, uh, apparently this is, uh, Ska, but I, I, I've heard that word as a genre a lot, but I have no idea what constitutes as Ska music. Um, but apparently the opening is Ska. Um. I... Uh, I, I just, I mostly recommend this for the music. Uh, tonally, it's a, a good amount darker. It's on the darker side of the series. Um, the theme of the show is desire, which, oh, that's a very sharp D. Uh, don't take that out of context. Uh, de desire. So, um... Uh, the villains of the show are physical embodiments of desire. Uh, and I think it's interesting because this show does actually, like, tell and show that people need some form of, of greed. Some form of greed because uh you know this is supposed to be a kid show made to sell toys i i wasn't expecting a message like you need some kind of want in your life to keep moving forward to have something to strive for because if you don't you'll just be going through life aimlessly just doing whatever like Obviously, having too much is bad. You don't want to, in, in the same way, you don't want to eat too much. But just like eating, you still need to do it. You need to have some form of desire. You need greed to some extent. You just can't have it take over your life. Having it take over your life is just as bad as having none at all. Having no direction in your life whatsoever is just as bad as having a single desire take over your entire life. Which, I I was floored by this show going, like, having that as its main concept. Because I, I was like, yo, I, I came here for, for, like, action and good music, bro. Like, I, I wasn't expecting that kind of stuff from a kid show. But it, it, it's good. Like, I, I agree with that message. I, yeah. I mean, I, I thought that before the show, and I was like, yeah. Um. Although, I, I will admit, O's has a very bad and very disappointing, uh, main villain. So the, uh, BB. E.G. Uh, is just disappointing. He's 
He, uh, he's there throughout most of the series. He's just never built up to be that much of a threat. Like, they, they give him too many comedic moments that undermine his, like, creepiness and th uh, how threatening he is. Um... Uh, but I would say that's the only knock I have against it. That's the only negative point I have against it. Uh, everything else, I would say the show pretty much nails. From the action to the other villains, to character dynamics, to character growth of the main character, to suit designs, to cool finishers, yeah. I would say it nails pretty much everything else, except for the main villain. Um, hmm. Hmm. I... I think... I think that's all I have to say about O's. Which is, eh, that's fine. Which, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should start drawing, maybe, no. <laughs> Just been an hour. Uh, can I drag this? Why can I not drag this anymore? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, uh, ta ja no. I'm not doing Tajador. Um, I'm doing Tatoba. <laughs> Tatoba combo, not Tajador. Uh, I I get them sadly mixed up, even though they're not that similar. Okay, so for Taka, it's going to be red. Uh, for Dora. Oh wait, I have the colors I used over here. Taka Dora needs to be yellow. It's getting really hard to see that. I should probably turn off flux. Eh. Wait, no, I have it for color. Whatever. And then Bata is green. So just drawing a very simple tatoba. Uh as Dragon Quest slime stack. Which eh just gonna really easily just freehand it. Whatever. Oh, oh man, that's a, a lot cleaner than the other side. Uh oh oh no. Okay. Da to ba. Da to ba da to ba. Which actually technically uh O's is kind of technically an anniversary season because it was uh it was uh it it was being aired during the 40th anniversary. So it very very technically is an anniversary season. Should I draw the mask on them? Uh no. I should pit wings on him, however. Uh I don't know how to draw wings. Oh, oh, those are way too round. F fine? 
I guess that. Oh, wait. N wait. Oh, no. I need to. Wait. Can wait. I, I, I forget how you redo. Oh, what, what's the redo button? Okay, control shift Z. Okay. Oh, re redo isn't redoing. Oh, no. Uh. Uh. It's fine. I'll just I'll just re redo it all manually. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh yeah, I, I should draw the wings in the style of angel slime wings, shouldn't I? Since that's the wing typed. Right, right, right. So uh Angel slime, since it's a bird. Uh, Tora is beast, and I think there's like a a wild kind of slime. I I sadly don't think there's any bug type of slimes, since that's kind of the opposite of what a slime is, like having a hard carapace on a, you know, a form a formless blob, kind of ruins the point um i forget exactly what's called so i'll just bit wild slime which that's getting way too close to the thing slime okay um uh i guess Try to draw another wing. Wah. Wah. Wait. I. Uh oh. Uh. This way. I guess that's better. Fine. Uh, oh wow, that turned out real bad. Um, hmm, should I do it this way? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Then simple eyes. How big do I make the eyes? That's too small. It's still too small. Um, seems about right. Da do ba, da do ba, da do ba. Da ka do ra ba ta. And then, I think this slime has like a little bit of a mohawk and claws. Which hell? What do I want? To, this is gonna be hard as hell to see. Okay, let me just uh, do it that way. Yes. Oh, my eyes are breaking trying to concentrate on this. Oh my gosh. I'm... Oh no. Oh, oh he's, he's a little too, too chunky. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, it needs to be rounder. But how round? It needs to be thicker. Ah, uh, seems, seems about right, I guess. Fine. Um, what color should I make the mohawk? I guess blue, because Rato Rata combo has blue eyes. So I guess, I guess blue mohawk. Um, sure. I, I think the mohawk goes down to about here. Um, I think it also had sideburns. That's 
really weird to think about. You know, I should be looking at a picture of these things, but, um, nah. Who? Our uh, references, that, that's for, that's for, uh, pro pro professional artists. Nah, I'm, I'm, nah, nah. Nah. That's very nah. Who needs who needs references? Come on. Um hmm. Also, I should probably close this line because it's on a different layer. Which actually let me drag this layer below that one. Yes. Um, it also has tiny, tiny little feats. Tiny little feetsies. Uh, I, hmm. Tiny little feet with claws. I don't know exactly how to show that. Especially since he's going to be on a stack. Um, this, maybe like that. With, uh. You know what? Fine. I'll keep it like that. It's very bad. That's fine. And my eyes are burning trying to concentrate on yellow on white. Oh my gosh. It's absolutely horrible. Okay. Draw, draw some more of these claws. I will not say that they are toes. Because a a slime having toes would be too weird. I don't like that. Okay, and then ba bata. Which I guess will just be a regular slime since there's not really a um Yeah, there's not really a bug type of slime. Sadly. Which, yes, it does make sense. But sometimes things making sense is not fun. I guess I'll have to erase this. Okay. Um, and I guess just eyes? Yes. Uh, should I give all these guys the default? The default slime smile? Hmm. Uh, okay. How does it look? It's like they have a hot dog for a mouth. Wow. Oh yeah, they also have t tiny little pupils. A little, little just plain, plain just... Boop. Boop. I make this one a little bit more solid too. Yep. And then... Boop. And then, boop, boop. Oh, I need to make this one a little bit bigger too then. Boop. These eyes look slightly creepy. Let's start, let's start making the mouths so they're not as creepy. Wow. 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 There's the mouth. Uh-oh. There it is. There's the mouth. Wow. 
Wow. You did a draw challenge? A, a monster from Dragon Quest every day in October. Oh, you did that for Drawtober? A lot of trouble drawing the slimes. It, it's deceptive because slimes have such a simple design, you know? But they're also so iconic that it feels like wrong if you don't do it exactly right. Oh my god. Like, they're so iconic and popular, it feels... It feels you you really have to nail it because of how well known they are. Um, I I need to give them their tongues. Okay, what shade of red? Um, hmm. maybe. It's supposed to almost be a hot dog brown. Well, it, our hot... I guess hot dogs are brown. It's like an orangish kind of like... Orangish, brownish kind of like... Brightness, I guess? Sure, let's go with this. Then... Bap. Oh wait, wrong layer. No, wrong layer. Then, bap, bap, uh oh, what, and bap, bap. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna paint bucket this stuff in. Let's hope it doesn't break anything. Um, oh, where is paint bucket tool even? Is that it? Oh, uh, no. Nope, it's broken. Nope, it's broken. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I need a... Uh-oh. I need to uh, clean up some lines here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. You make sure some... These lines are solid. You make sure there are no gaps whatsoever. Um. Oh, there's a gap in there. Um. Hopefully. Oh no, the eyes. Oh, that that somehow has a gap in it. Don't know how. Oh, it's that pixel there. Ah. Uh. Okay. Let's see. Up. Oh. How does that still have a hole in it? Where? Let me, okay. Let me actually zoom in then. Uh, what are my shortcuts for zooming in? Nope. That's not it. Um. I don't remember my shortcuts for zooming in. I'll just slider it. I, is this it? I don't see where there are any other gaps. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, um. I already forgot where. Okay. Finally. Uh, I probably don't need to like obsessively fill in that. So I'll stop. I say I'll stop as I continue. <laughs> 
Okay, um, pick this. Okay, good. And then I should be able to paint bucket this. Yes, okay. And more paint bucket. Ma, ma. That actually doesn't look as horrible as I thought it would. Huh. Funny how things work that way. Um, ba, ba, uh, in this color, ba, and this yellow, ah, oh no, oh no, wait, oh no. Okay, I guess I do have to fill a couple more things in. Um, looks like right there. I think right there. Hmm. Where are all of the spots I need to cover up? Up, up, up. Uh, let's see. Okay. Nope. That still has a gap somewhere, somehow. It being yellow on white does not help. Um, probably that. Let's fill in that a tiny bit more. Uh, I think that's the only place where it could be. All right. All right, nice. Noise, noise. Oh, that filled in the blue when I it should not have. Oh, duh, because the blue isn't... Okay, wait. Duh. Because the blue doesn't go all the way to the edge. Duh. So the blue has to... Make sure it's all filled in, no gaps. And make sure this. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, hopefully. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Nice. I will clean up the lines on this because it's super noticeable with it being uh, blue on yellow. Even though the whole thing is subpar anyways, but whatever. I will be as perfectly subpar as I can be. Finish that up, and that looks clean. Good. Uh, uh, filling in the lines feels kind of nice because you're just following this path, just running over it. Uh, it's slightly satisfying. Which should I... Meh. Sure. I will fix the mouth too. Fine. 
Um, that line still has a little bit. Oh my god, I'm my eyes are starting to tear up looking at all this yellow. I'm so sorry for like doing all of that. Must be even worse on your guys' end. Um. All right, let's hope. Let's hope. Oh wait, that's not paint bucket tool. Ah, good, 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 good. Ah, perfect. Perfect, the simplest one was the easiest one. Good, that's how it should be. How zoomed in is this? Oh, that's very zoomed in. Yeah, at 100 you won't, like, notice it. For some reason you could notice a little bit here. No, that's just this mouth right here. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, I think I think I might be done with this. Here it is. The Tatoba slime stack. Actually, big slime boy. <laughs> yes. Actually doesn't look it doesn't look super, it, well, it doesn't look as bad as I thought. That's what I'll say. All right, um, how do I, okay, there it is. Um, is there any way I can multi-click? Slime totem. Yeah, there, um, uh, Officially called slime stacks, which is kind of boring. But eh, it's what they're called. So, hmm. Should I? You know what? I will. Where's selection tool? Is this circle? That is circle. Oh, where's freeform selection tool? I this magic wand? I can't tell by the hovering over things. Wait, actually. Tools? Nope, that doesn't help at all. Nope, that is magic wand. Okay, here it is. Okay. Cut. Get down to a different layer. Uh, I can delete that layer. Okay, good. So this I can. Uh, is there a way to... do just the selection like this? Is there a way I can crop to selection? I, I'm not too, too versed in Krita yet. I, I've I've been slacking on these reps. Um, I don't. I don't see anything that says it. Uh, canvas? No. You know what? That's fine. I'll just save this. Uh, actually, will that show up? It probably won't, because my uh, uh, my my layer tools and brushes don't show up. But I'll I'll be safe and just not show that. 
Um. Well, I I, I guess that's it. <laughs> thank thank you for coming, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening to me talk about Common Rider for roughly three hours. Uh, and draw this very jank-looking slime stack. This jank tatoba slime stack. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, also, of course, thank you for the raid, Shady Desu. Uh, <sighs> oh, wow, I really did need a stretch. Well, just sitting here like that. Oof. Okay. <laughs> oh, it was fun. Uh, thank you for thinking, uh, for thinking that listening to my lecture about Comrade was fun. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I just, I, I just think it's fun, and I want more people to get into Common Rider, which I, I myself do need to get into other Toku series, uh, like Sentai, Garo, uh, Godzilla, Ultraman. But this season I am watching uh, Zen Kiger, actually. And you know what? Let me make a... <laughs> oh, you've been learning a lot about Tokusatsu. Good. Good. Uh, how, do you, how do I deselect? Uh, where's the deselect tool? Is there a way... Okay, deselect. Uh, oh, you enjoyed it? Okay, good. I, I actually, I might, I, I might talk about Zen Kiger a little bit for this last part before uh, ending the stream. So Zen Kiger is the currently running uh, Sentai series. So the series that the Western Power Rangers is based off of. And this is an anniversary series because I think this is 45th anniversary? I, I think Sentai is five years behind Kamen Rider. I'm not sure. But this is one of the big anniversary seasons. No, it's probably, it's probably 40th. I don't think they would be, be doing a big anniversary thing for 45th. Okay. So, basically the gist is that this is another one of the big anniversary shows. So... The main character's whole thing is that they use the powers of previous Sentai teams. But the big thing about this series is that the head of the squad is the only human. The other four members of the Sentai team are... They are called Kikainoids, and they're robot people. Um, and the cool thing about it is that all of the robot people, their transformations and what they're based off of are the mechs of previous Sentai or Power Ranger shows. And the first one that joins the team is uh, is Red. And he's actually Q Ranger, or he's the robot for the Megazord and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So when he transforms, he actually looks like the original Megazord. Um, and then I, uh, I... I forget what the other ones are because I, I really don't remember that much of Power Rangers, but all of the... all of the Sentai uh, teams that the party member robots are based off of are are seasons that have been uh, adapted as Power Rangers. Oh, top tier fan service? Yeah, that's every uh, anniversary season. It, it's just all fan service. Like the, uh, the previous um, anniversary season was, uh, is weird, they're pirate themed, but that one had every single Power Ranger up to that point. Well, Power Ranger Sentai, that, eh, you know, you know. I I tend to say say them as if they're interchangeable, even though. Oh, I'm sorry. I I tend to say them as if they're interchangeable, even though they're technically not. But yeah, 
the previous anniversary season had a giant fight where they had the suits for every, every single Sentai up to that point, which is amazing. Like, that, that's insane. Uh, imagine, like, 30 years worth of suits. Like, Jesus. Ooh. But, yeah, if you, uh... Uh... I mean, honestly, if you grew up watching Power Rangers, uh, you can hop into that series perfectly fine. Just know that it's currently airing, so new episodes are coming out weekly. But, you know, like, the first person that joins the team is, like, the original Power, uh, Power Rangers series. The, the Sentai series that got adapted into that. So, so, it's not really that hard to get into. Like, a lot of the things that they'll use, you'll just be like, Oh yeah, I don't recognize it, it must be one of the Sentai ones that they never adapted. But it has very good energy, it's fun. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest, I, I've only watched the first episode and I already love it. The, the team has incredible chaotic energy, like, uh, I'm going to spoil it since it's just the first episode. Uh, so when the first Red Ranger joins the main guy's team and he gives him the, like, transmorpher, I forget what it's called, but the thing that lets him transform... Uh, uh, it's a gun this season. So when he gives them the gun uh, in the middle of like this big fight as the bad guys start invading, it's like, wait, are you sure you really want to give that to me? I'm, I'm a robot like them, you know? And he's like, but you're not like them. You want to get along with people, right? And he's like, all right, if, if you trust me, all right. And then, uh, which is cool. It, it's a series about like, Fr friendship and like even though people like you know being friends even though you're different which is good for an anniversary season but the chaotic energy thing is like oh so you've got uh two people in your team now so you're betraying us huh since uh even though we're all robots and like in the middle of the big bad speech the dude who just joined the team just takes the gun and straight up shoots and kills one of the mooks. And he's just like, huh, this works pretty well. <laughs> so, I, I really hope it's a running joke that all the new people that join the team, they just shoot a bad guy, like, in the middle of their speech. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just fun. Uh, a lot of very good energy with it. Um, I, I recommend it. It's literally the first actual Sentai series I've watched because I, I just grew up with Power Rangers. Uh, I, I never went back to look into other Sentai series, but it, it's, it's good. It's good. It's fun. Good dynamic, good energy. Like, it, it, it's good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's it for me tonight. I will post this, uh, I don't know what to call it, a doodle on Twitter afterwards. I'll, I'll save it, clean it up, and export it. Um, I, I don't know if I should save the slides where I just talk about Kamen Rider. Uh, I'll probably ditch it since I'll save the VOD anyways. Um, yeah, I'll just delete those and, uh, and just make sure I save the VOD. Uh, thank you for coming, Shady, and thank you for the raid, too. Uh, but yes, thank, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to listen to me rant about Kamen Rider. Uh, thank you for watching, thank you for chatting, thank you for raiding. Thank you for lurking. Uh, and good night, everybody. Otsuraku. Actually, let me let me say that in a little bit of a happier way. Um, 
Otsuraku. No, mm. All right. No, you know what? Forget it. Uh, Otsuraku, everybody. Good night.